Did you know that H5N1 avian influenza, aka bird flu, has infected over 80 cats since 2022 and has a mortality rate that exceeds 50%? Barn cats, feral cats, indoor cats, even big cats in zoos have been infected along with other species of mammals. Hi, I'm Dr. Cellini. In this video, I'm gonna go over some very important information regarding avian influenza and cats. This is a new and emerging problem. We're gonna cover five topics in this video. Number one, what is avian influenza? A brief primer. Number two, how are cats, even indoor cats, getting infected with bird flu in the first place? Number three, why are cats so susceptible to this virus? Number four, what are the main clinical signs to watch for in cats that you can watch for at home? And finally, number five, how to prevent exposure. We'll also cover a sixth bonus topic, which is how these cats were able to survive and create the worst movie I've ever seen. Seriously though, by the end of this video, you should have an up-to-date working knowledge of this disease in cats to help you, the cat parent, make an informed decision about their care. And frankly, I haven't made enough videos about cats on my channel, so, here we go. Before I get into that, guys, please, if you don't mind hitting the like and subscribe button to help me grow the channel and spread this information out to as many people as I can. Thank you very much. Now let's begin. Okay, so let's start with what is avian influenza? Avian influenza, also known as highly pathogenic avian influenza, A parentheses H5N1 virus clad 2.3.4.4B, which I will not be saying again, let's just call it bird flu, is a naturally occurring virus present in many wild bird populations. It was first described in Northern Italy in 1878 by an Italian veterinarian named Eduardo Perencito, who described it as foul plague because of the high mortality rate observed in poultry. Fast forward about 100 years, and avian influenza was officially deemed the cause of this disease. Bird flu is a subtype of flu A, which everyone knows about. My whole family recently got flu A, and it totally sucked. Breaking news. Flu A is what's called an RNA virus as opposed to a DNA virus. Now, without getting into too much detail here, RNA viruses tend to have a much higher mutation rate than DNA viruses. And this is why making a permanent vaccine against these types of viruses is often impossible. So why there's a new flu vaccine to get every year, right? I mean, if you believe in that sort of thing. I do. It's also part of the reason why this virus has been showing these tendencies to spill over into other species like cats, humans, and other mammals. Bird flu virus has been circulating around the world since the 90s, but the first cases in birds in the U.S. were seen in 2021. Fast forward to March of 2024, it was discovered in a herd of dairy cattle in Michigan. In cattle, this virus causes mild symptoms that lack lethargic, they won't produce as much milk or their milk will look kind of weird for a week or two, but most cows recover back to normal function. Where this gets interesting though, is the role that dairy cattle play in this whole thing. And that leads me to topic number two, which is how are cats, even indoor cats, getting infected with bird flu? Well, there seems to be two ways. In May 2024, two indoor domestic cats from two separate households in Michigan each presented to Michigan State University Vet Hospital within one week of each other for rapidly progressing loss of appetite and neurologic dysfunction. Sadly, both cats experienced a severe and rapid disease course, and they passed away within a few days from the onset of symptoms. Both of these cats were exclusively indoors, according to the report, but they shared one interesting thing in common. Their owners both worked on dairy farms. The owner of Cat One did not work with animals directly, but worked on the dairy farm premises in another capacity. The owner of Cat Two worked as a transporter of raw milk from various farms in the area and reported frequent milk splash exposures to the face, eyes, and clothing. Yes, that is a occupational hazard when it comes to handling milk. The other cats in these two households developed either no symptoms or mild self-limiting respiratory symptoms and were thankfully fine. Now, insofar as how exactly these two cats came down with bird flu is unknown because a precise mode of transmission is hard to tell from this report. But suffice it to say, there seems to at least be a potential for an occupational exposure here, given the fact that the owners worked on dairy farms. Additionally, one of the dairy farm workers and one of the workers' family members did show symptoms of respiratory illness during this time, but ultimately, they tested negative for H5N1. You can read the full report right here. I'll put the link in the description. So there seems to be some sort of connection between dairy cattle and cats in and around those areas that kind of seems to be coexisting here. Perhaps more important mode of transmission for cats seems to be 
raw food. In December 2024, Northwest Naturals, a raw pet food company based in Oregon, voluntarily recalled a line of their product called Feline Turkey Recipe Raw Frozen Pet Food due to H5N1 contamination. Now, in case there was any doubt here as far as the connection, the Oregon Department of Agriculture issued the following statement. We are confident that this cat contracted H5N1 by eating the Northwest Naturals raw and frozen pet food. This cat was strictly an indoor cat. It was not exposed to the virus in the environment and results from the genome sequencing confirmed that the virus recovered from the raw pet food and the infected cat were exact matches to each other. So this seems like an open and shut case. Later in December 2024, the LA County Department of Public Health issued another warning for residents to not feed their pets Monarch brand raw pet food due to detection of H5N1 bird flu virus in product samples with a report of a house cat who eats this food coming down with the virus. Now this is a bit of a softer connection because I'm not sure if there was genome sequencing and matching done for these cats in LA compared to those cats uh, in that case in Oregon. But nonetheless, this is something Something to be cautious about going forward and it demonstrates another possible or probable connection between raw food and bird flu virus. Now it should be noted that Monarch brand apparently denies the allegations of bird flu being found in their product. They've issued a statement on their homepage that you can read here. I find this statement uh, a little bit hard to reconcile. The Monarch product was apparently confirmed to contain live infective H5N1 virus. So I'm not sure what the argument from Monarch even is. I digress. So to answer the question of how cats are getting bird flu, the answer seems to be mostly from a combination of exposure to dairy cattle harboring the virus, including possibly the milk itself, raw poultry products, or less commonly direct from the source, that being wild birds. For instance, in January, 2025, a cat with a confirmed case of bird flu was identified in Oregon, and this cat was an outdoor cat with exposure to wild birds. Basically, influenza viruses bind to what are called sialic receptors on host cells. More specifically, the virus prefers to bind to what are called alpha-2-3 linked sialic acid receptors. Birds have this version of the sialic receptor in their respiratory tracts. This is why they're so susceptible to the virus binding to them and why they succumb to the disease so often. Cats have these receptors in not only their respiratory tracts, but also their gastrointestinal tracts. What that means is not only can cats get bird flu from respiratory exposure, what we commonly think of when we think of flu transmission, but also by ingesting the virus. This is probably why cats get this disease from eating raw meat tainted with the virus. And it's also one of the reasons why their mortality rate is so high. Now, the only cat I'm aware of that is immune to bird flu is this guy totally sick. God, Invincible is such an amazing show, and this might be my favorite character on the show. If you know, you know. As for us humans, we have a different form of this receptor in our respiratory tracts and lower amounts of the alpha-2-3 version in our GI tracts, so the bird flu virus tends to have a more difficult time binding to us for now. Hey guys, Dr. Cellini here. Just wanted to take a break from the video for a quick second to let you know that I am now offering three forms of online consultation. The first form is for you, the prospective pet owner. If you are looking to purchase a dog or cat from a breeder, you're not sure necessarily about health testing, preventative care, genetic testing, the quality of your breeder, if they're doing enough health testing, you're not sure about the breed and how much they may cost. All these questions can be overwhelming. So I am now offering pre-purchase breed consultations for you. You can DM me or email me at dvmchilini.com with the subject line breed consult, and I will help you along this process if you have any questions. The second version of consultation I'm doing is a direct vet to vet neuro consult. If you're a vet in need of a neuro consultation for one of your patients and you don't have access to a neurologist nearby, feel free to email me or DM me again, dvmchilini at gmail.com or D dvmchilini on Instagram. I'll review anything you want. I'll go over a plan with you by phone or email. This is vet to vet consultation. And the third form of consultation I can do is if you are a pet owner looking for general advice regarding your pet or need help with determining urgency of a medical problem or just have a general question, again, you can email me or DM me. This is not medical advice. I can't do that remotely. This is just general pet advice or triage needs. So again, you can email me at dvmchilini at gmail.com with the subject line consult or you can DM me on Instagram.
Symptoms in cats are mainly going to be respiratory and neurologic in origin, as you can imagine. Neurologic signs like ataxia or incoordination, circling, tremors, seizures, blindness, behavior change to where they're just acting really withdrawn or like a zombie. Uh, it turns out their nervous system has a bunch of these sialic receptors I just mentioned. So that's probably why they're so susceptible to neurologic dysfunction. Respiratory symptoms are going to include heavy discharge from the nose and eyes, rapid or difficulty breathing, possibly sneezing or coughing. There's a million different causes of these respiratory symptoms in cats, though. So just because your cat develops these symptoms doesn't necessarily mean they have bird flu. So just be aware of that as well. Now, sadly, though, these symptoms seem to progress quite rapidly in cats, as I mentioned previously in those case reports. Cats will usually succumb to the infection within just a few days because they seem to be so sensitive to it. Currently, there are two ways to really prevent exposure in your cats. Number one, don't feed them raw meat or unpasteurized milk. And number two, have them indoors. Now, I know what many of you may be thinking, indoors only dry kibble diet. That's a recipe for my cat becoming obese and getting diabetes thanks to big kibble. Well, you're not wrong. I mean, you are wrong if you think big kibble is like some giant conspiracy, but you're not wrong about like indoor cats getting diabetes and being overweight in general. That is a thing. But just consider this. Bird flu is widespread and it's maintained worldwide in wild bird populations. It's been out there for many years already, and it's really not going anywhere. Wild birds are constantly exposing these gigantic poultry and dairy facilities to the virus, which is a whole separate issue in and of itself. I know, it's not ideal. But currently, the reach of this virus is just too broad. Like, it's just out of control. Even with culling efforts, where, like, every chicken in a poultry facility is unalived, I don't get the impression that we're eliminating bird flu anytime soon. Therefore, feeding your cat raw poultry and meat or unpasteurized milk is more or less just exposing them to the tissues of this virus's intermediate or direct host. And since there are really no definitive benefits of feeding your cat raw meat in the first place compared to fresh cooked or kibble food, the equation to me comes out to either feeding my cat cooked food or dry kibble. Now, I'm sure everybody agrees with me with that, right? Right? A side note, refrigeration and freezing do not kill the virus. Only cooking the food does that. I've seen some stuff online about high pressure pasteurization. This might reduce the risk, but we don't know if this eliminates the risk. And we really don't know because the standards of this procedure aren't really well laid out. We don't really know exactly what it does or if it eliminates the risk entirely. Cooking food with high heat is the only way to kill the virus that we know of currently and eliminate the risk. Now, the other way to prevent bird flu would be to keep your cat indoors to prevent exposure directly from a sick wild bird like the case in Oregon I mentioned. Now, are the odds very high that an outdoor cat would get bird flu from a wild bird? Probably not, but again, we don't know what the actual risk is if your cat is just disappearing for 12 hours a day. Now, quick update, as of this taping, Elanco has just released a statement that it is in the final stages of getting an avian influenza uh, vaccine ready for commercial use specifically in cattle. Now, it'll be interesting to see if this helps reduce cattle as a host for the virus here and how this affects the whole cycle and exposures. All right, guys, so have you heard about H5N1 bird flu in cats? Let me know in the comments. Let me know if I missed anything or any major details or anything you just want to say. This is a constantly evolving story, so I'll make follow-up videos as needed in the future if you all want me to. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you found this information useful, please share with your friends, smash the like and subscribe button. Thanks again, and I'll see you on the next video. Peace.